We got the truck running. It isn't exactly a warm and pleasant evening, but can you see it? We have a snowmobile on this trailer. That's got to be good luck or something, right? Well, good morning, everybody. It's time to go back to work. Yay. Christmas is over. And it's a beautiful minus 31 outside right now. Oh yeah, freezing my toes off. Yep, that's negative 28.5 Fahrenheit right here right now. Oh yeah, let's go to work. It's gonna be fun. Let's let's do some strapping and some chaining and tarping maybe if we're lucky. It's gonna be great. I'm just get into the garage here. Hopefully the car will start. Oops, that's locking it. Oh, let's unlock it. Okay. Hello, my beautiful. Hello. And you over there, you too. Hi. That's just above freezing, just enough so that things don't freeze in. So the car should start no problem. All right, so we stopped by at Tim Hortons. You can see behind that truck a little bit over there. Just on the way to work. A little bit slow going this morning. I brought my laptop in to get fixed, so that's good. I'm trying to make it to work to get to my truck, and I'm gonna have to warm it up for like an hour, because it is literally, it's minus 31 outside. I wasn't joking before, it's cold. My sister just uh, let us know that their pipes froze at their house. Oh man, winter causes a lot of issues, but we're Canadian, we can handle it, right? Right? Imagine, none of these issues would be issues if we just had nicer weather. Right, Diesel? Where is this global warming? People keep saying, global warming, it keeps, it, 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 winter keeps coming. I'm not buying it. No. A little global warming would be kind of nice right now, I'll tell you what. Have you guys ever experienced minus 31 degree weather? For you Americans, that's minus 28 and a half Fahrenheit. Have you ever experienced that? You're welcome to come see what it feels like. We got the truck running. Yes! You have no idea how happy I am. Oh. It's so cold, everyone's having problems starting their trucks, obviously. Mine was plugged in and mine's got some top-notch batteries, apparently. She barely turned over. Oh man, I mean, they heard me yell in the office. Woo! She's running. Anyway, the, the, the load I was supposed to deliver, those generators, apparently they did it for me already. Thank you very much. Load gods took care of my stuff for me without even me knowing, so I don't have to do that. That's good. But instead, we're going down to Thief River Falls to pick up a load down there, which is super easy. I can just throw the straps over it, and I don't have to be outside a lot today. Another thumbs up. So only half the office is at work today. Uh, I'm going to go in there now and uh, visit while my truck warms up for the next hour. Isn't this truck clean, Diesel? Like, I just want to give props to uh, our detailer who detailed this truck for me. Amazing job, really good. It looks like a brand new truck, as brand new as this truck can look. It smells great in here, it's clean. You did a great job, thank you. Well hey guys, I still haven't gotten anything put away in here yet, but uh, we had a little bit of change of plans. We're gonna go to Thief River Falls twice today. Instead, what they got me doing is saving a driver who gelled up up in uh, a little further north in Manitoba here. Remember a few years ago when I gelled up? I know how freaky that was. But uh, he got towed back and he left his trailer here around Ericsdale, Manitoba. So I came up here, bobtailed up here. I'm going to hook up onto his trailer and I got to deliver his load tomorrow morning into Swan River, Manitoba. Well, a little, a little ways further than where we are right now. Right now, I'm already in Ericsdale. I'm going to hook up to the trailer there. I'm going to get the paperwork. Gonna make sure everything is good, that nothing was tampered with in the meantime. Do my pre-trip, and then we'll be on our way. Got a deliver in Swan River, first thing tomorrow morning. It's a van load. Well, it isn't exactly a warm and pleasant evening, but minus 25, not bad. Can you see it? We have a snowmobile on this trailer. That's gotta be good luck or something, right? Right, for winter time? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Makes me a little bit nervous that the other guy froze up. And now I'm out here. 
hoping not to freeze up. I think I'll be fine. As soon as we get to Dauphin, I believe we're going through Dauphin on the way to Swan River. Not too sure, but as soon as I get to a proper uh, fuel station, Petro Canada, I'm gonna fuel up and I'll, I'm also gonna put some, uh, what's it called, power service anti-gel in there, into the fuel, just to keep it liquidy so it doesn't turn to jello. Because jello doesn't like to burn very well. I've tried. It's better when it's in liquid form. Woo! Woo! That's all I can say. Woo! That's my really cold face, Diesel. Woo! What? What? You sound like an owl, man. Hey, your dog food still comes from me. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Words of wisdom. Okay, now that we're all hooked up, everything's working. Just gonna let the e-log system here know that, hey, we're pulling something now, okay? All right. And how far is Swan River from here? Swan River. I don't even know where I'm going. Where's my bills? Okay, let's see. So 355 kilometers, about three and a half hours or so. Where, where are we going here? Let's tap on this. Okay, so that's our route for today. Oh, we're going right close to the Saskatchewan border there, eh? Check that out, give you some perspective here. Let's zoom out a bit. Why did I drop a pin there? I did not want to do that. Okay, so this is uh, some perspective for you. There's the United States. There's Canada. There's my home province, Manitoba, right in the middle. And we're just going across to the west side there. See, I'm from the southeast corner, if this thing would move. Right in that southeast corner there, and we're going all the way up there. Got ourselves on the highways. Highway 68 westbound here in Manitoba. Not much up this way. Let's hope that my truck has a little bit better luck than the last guy's truck. It was a Volvo as well, so I don't know where he got his fuel. Maybe he had some American fuel in there. I got some American fuel in here too, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. A couple hours down the road is Dauphin, Manitoba, where I'm gonna put some fuel and anti-gel into my tanks. So, should be good, should be good. Woo. I think I'm catching a bit of a cold or something. Whew. Just had a sneezing fit. We got here to Swan River, and as we came into town, uh, my truck started sputtering. Sort of gasping for fuel a little bit. You know what that means. You remember how we fueled over in Dauphin? What I forgot to tell you, or what I haven't told you yet, what I haven't told you is that somebody stole my anti-gel out of my truck. It's nowhere. They went into my cubby hole, got into the truck, got into my cubby hole, and took my anti-gel. I had two white power service in there and two power service 911 in there. They're gone. I needed them today. So what did I do? I, I, I had nothing that I could put in there, so I just fueled it up with the Petropass fuel. And nothing was open. It was just a card lock. So uh, I figured it was running good all the way here. And as we were pulling into town, it started sputtering just a little bit, right? But I opened up the hood here and I went to go look at the fuel filter because if the fuel filter is plugging with gelled fuel, you'll be able to see that the filter's all the way full. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit. There's like this glass little bubble and there's a filter inside. And if the glass is all the way full with fuel with the filter in there, that means that the filter's plugged. But if the, the fuel isn't all the way up, then you know it's, it's not completely plugged. I don't know what the sputtering was when I came into town. I'm hoping it was just a hiccup. This truck was in the shop this last week but it sure felt like there was uh, some struggle getting fuel into the engine. So I'll, I'll come, uh, I'll, I'll take you out there to look at this fuel filter, see what you think of it. It is a little high, the fuel level is a little high on it, but it's at a point where I'm comfortable enough to know it'll, it should remain idling all night. And then at least I can deliver this load in the morning and uh, hopefully there's somewhere in town here where I can swing in and get some power service 911 and a new fuel filter and I'll just change it myself. But. Uh, I'll show you this fuel filter. Oh boy, this brings back so many bad memories. Every winter, gelling up. Man. Oh, we're gonna need some light. You need light. One second there. Let there be light. Where is it? Here's my light. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Bear with me, guys. Gotta use my nose here. Okay, 
Now you can see me, right? I don't know if I'm comfortable parking here. I'm at the co-op, uh, and there's no motel. Well, there's a Super 8 right over there. It's about an eighth of a mile or eighth of a mile. I don't know. It's, if the truck were to turn off suddenly and the filter were to plug up and the fuel gelled up and my truck couldn't run anymore, I need to have a backup plan of where I'm going to go. There's no stores open 24 hours around me here. So this is something you got to think of late at night on cold winter nights. If your truck shuts off, you need a place to go stay warm, especially since I got to think for two. So I might move yet. See if I can park a little bit closer to the motel over there, just in case. I really, I, I'm really a little bit paranoid when it comes to gelling up in the winter time because that one time when I when I gelled up in Saskatchewan, it was like minus 60 outside, and if your truck shuts off, you're freezing in here within like 15 minutes. And if we have to walk that far yet, Diesel's paws aren't used to the cold. His paws will freeze, and that could damage his feet. So. Like I said, I got a thing for two. Winter time is here, people. Christmas is over, so I'm done with winter. I'm ready for summer. I know today's vlog was a little bit uh, mediocre. I'm pretty sure of that because it's been a, a an all over the place day, not a very creative day in my mind. I'm not feeling very well. I'm blaming it on that. Uh, I'm feeling kind of sick. I've got the aches and pains. Uh, like I can feel my skin as my shirt rubs over it. You know those kind of aches and pains? I'm cold. But I do have a little bit of a surprise for the vlog uh, that we picked up in Winnipeg today. I was debating whether or not showing you or not, but seeing as not very much exciting stuff happened today, besides almost gelling up and dying, uh, I wanted to show you this. A new drone. Uh, it's a DJI Spark. So I'm really excited to start using that and incorporating that into the vlogs again. I really miss the drone footage. I had a drone, uh, a Phantom 3, uh, DJI Phantom 3 standard, and it did really good until it uh, hit a tree over a year ago already. Can you believe that? You guys remember my drone footage? That was over a year ago that I broke that thing. So it's been over a year. And we finally got a replacement. I've just been like putting off opening it but I think it's time, I think it's time. You guys wanna be here for the unboxing? Why don't we do that? We'll add this in today's vlog. Nothing, nothing really excited happened today. I'm really not feeling that good, so uh, maybe tomorrow this can make the vlog a little better. I gotta read the manual first though and see if it's okay to use it in these frigid temperatures. I might have to wait until it warms up a little bit. But uh, yeah, so this is it in the box. I'll get it out of the box and show you how small this thing actually is. And it does everything and more that my old Phantom did. It's uh, a lot more portable too, obviously. Oops. Well, uh, I didn't exactly finish that vlog that day. I was feeling very sick. I don't know uh, why I didn't at least do the unboxing and whatnot, but I'm just going through my footage now, putting it together, editing it, and I had lost a clip right where I went to go show you that uh, fuel filter. I filmed that whole thing while I explained to you how the fuel filter worked and how to see if it was plugged or not. And apparently that clip didn't take. It turned out to be only like two and a half seconds long and then it stopped recording and I didn't realize that until now. So that was missing. It was just an off day for me. Just feeling sick and it was cold. I was also very worried about the truck that it was going to stop running. But I told you I was going to show you the uh, unboxing of the Spark. So there's the box right there. I opened it already, and the case for it is right here. And this is it, this is the whole case, and there's the drone. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm charging it over here. You probably already saw it. <laughs> uh, so this is how big it is, like, look at it compared to my hand. One sec. It's like, whoa, my hand's dirty, oh my. But uh, as soon as it starts flying, these spread out on their own, and then but for storage, it's very nice that they all fold together. This is a very small drone, very small, and it does more than my old drone did. It has a better camera, is more durable in my opinion, a lot lighter and much easier to carry around. Like I said, this is it. This is it right here. Uh, let's, I'm just charging it so it's, it's on a bit of a short cable here. I wanna go and do a, uh, uh, couple of shots with it outside 
So you just take it like this and you know, it would just pretty much go in there like that without that cord on there. And that thing closes on top of it and so easy to carry around with you. I'm not getting paid by DJI to talk about this. I'm just, I just really like this. Like this is it, the whole drone. The remote control is my phone right now. Eventually I'm gonna upgrade and get an actual remote control so I can go further because right now I can only go about 100, 150 feet away. Uh, but once I have a controller, uh, it, it, it has a much better signal and I'll be able to fly out into the sky up to two miles away or close to it. And then if it, you know, if I lose signal, it'll just come back to where it took off from on its own. You can also uh, program it to follow you. So you just have to walk or ride along in your quad or something. And it goes up to 30 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, and it'll just follow you around and you'll go around obstacles and most times. I mean, I'm not gonna test that. I don't wanna crash this drone, but uh, I really think it's gonna take the vlog to new heights. I'm really excited to start using it again. I hope you guys enjoy the footage from it. Uh, that's, that's all I really have to say to you right now. <laughs> I've got to edit the rest of this vlog and then i got to do a couple more days yet. And uh, yeah, hope you guys had a great New Year's. Wishing you all the best in 2018.